Gowen tried to keep his mind on the landscape as he rode at the head of the column. This sort of rolling terrain with its scattered bunches of trees was just flat enough to make you think you could see a long way, when in truth some of those occasional long ridges and low hills were not quite so low as they seemed. The wind was gusting up waves of dust today, and dust could hide a lot too. Demise Wells lay just off the road to his right, three stone wells in a small copse. The water barrels could stand topping, and it was at least four days to the next shore water, if the Alianella spring had not gone dry, but Galena had ordered no stopping. He tried to hold his attention where it should be, but he could not. From time to time he twisted in his saddle, looking back at the long snake of wagons stretching along the road, with Aes Sedai and warders riding alongside, and servants who were not in the wagons walking. Most of the younglings were at the rear, where Galena had ordered them. He could not see the one wagon in the center of the column, with six Aes Sedai always riding beside it, that had no canvas cover. He would have killed Althor if he could, but this sickened him. Even Arian had refused to take part any longer after the second day, and the light knew she had cause. Galena was adamant, though. Suddenly Gowan became aware of a horse galloping back down the road toward the wagons through sheets of dust, seemingly with no rider. Giselle, he ordered. Tell the wagon drivers to halt. Hal, tell Roger to ready the younglings. Without a word, they wheeled their horses and galloped. Gowan waited. That was Benji Dolfer's steel dust gelding, and as it came closer, Gowan could see Benji doubled over and clinging to the gelding's mane. The horse almost went past before Gowan could seize the reins. Benji turned his head without straightening, peered at Gowan with glazed eyes. There was blood around his mouth, and he had one arm tied against his middle as if trying to hold himself together. I will, he mumbled. Thousands. All sides, I think. Suddenly he smiled. Cold today, isn't it? Blood gushed out of his mouth, and he toppled to the road, staring unblinking at the sun. Gowan spun his stallion around, galloping toward the wagons. There would be time for Benji later, if any of them were alive. Galena rode to meet him, linen dust cloak flaring behind her, dark eyes blazing fury in that serene face. She had been furious constantly since the day after Althor tried to escape. Who do you think you are ordering the wagon stopped? she demanded. There are thousands of Aeel closing on us, I said I. He managed to keep his tone polite. The wagons were stopped at least, and the younglings forming up, but wagon drivers fingered their reins impatiently. Servants peered about fanning themselves. Aes Sedai chatted with warders. Galena's lips writhed contemptuously. You fool! No doubt those are the Shido. Sivana said she would give us an escort. But if you doubt, take your younglings and see for yourself. These wagons will keep moving toward Tarvalin. It is time you learn that I give the orders here, not... And if they are not your tame, Ail. This was not the first time in the last few days that she had suggested he lead a scout himself. He suspected if he did, he would find Aeel and not tame. Whoever they are, they've killed one of my men. At least one. There were still six scouts out. Maybe you should consider the possibility these are Althor's Aeel. Come to rescue him. It will be too late when they start spitting us. It was only then that he realized he was shouting, but Galena's anger actually faded. She looked up the road to where Benji lay, then nodded slowly. Perhaps it would not be unwise to be cautious this once. <laughs>